You have a bugged product or SKU on Amazon. You got to make a new one. You're wondering what to do with your inventory and how to manage that catalog. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through a couple of quick tips that'll be just invaluable for you to understand and do on your own business. So if you have a SKU that's bugged out, that means you can't ship into it. You're probably going to need to make a new SKU. The good news is it's fairly easy. You could take an ASIN such as this and hit the far right hand button, copy listing and fill out the information. Simply put in a unique SKU, put in the brand information. You can put the ASIN in here just like this. Yes, this is my product and put in the SKU right there, right? So let's say that this is the product in question. We've got MOM hyphen three, seven, five, six. So on the new SKU, I might do something like this and add a suffix hyphen new. This will help me know this is the right SKU to create shipments moving forward. The SKUs could bug for all kinds of reasons and this video is not about how or why those things occur. Instead, it's specifically about, okay, now that you've uh, need to make that new SKU, here's how to do it. Clone the listing, fill us out, hit submit, done. But then the next question that inevitably comes up from new Amazon sellers who've never done this before, what happens to the inventory? And so to answer that question, I've got some recommendations. First, sell out of the old SKU inventory first. And to do that, you could use two methods. Method number one, make the old SKU a dollar higher, I'm sorry, the new SKU a dollar higher in price. This means the buy box will go to your old SKU first, it sells out, and you can simply delete it at that stage. The second thing that you can do is physically close the listing. So here you can see right here it says inactive closed. The ASIN is fine. You can close a SKU without affecting the ASIN. Now, if that's the only SKU live on the ASIN, obviously the product's gonna go inactive. But if you have two SKUs with dual inventory, one's got 100 product, the other's got 1,000, and you close the 1,000 product SKU so that the 100 product SKU stocks out first, sells out first, then when it gets low in inventory, you can come back in and hit reopen. To reopen a listing, you see on the right hand side, it says relist right here. It's as simple as clicking relist. Now that menu we showed you earlier, very similar. All you gotta do is hit save and finish. Simple as that, product will be live again within five to 15 minutes. One note of caution, when you are transferring SKUs on an ASIN, there's a few things to keep in mind. Certain things on Amazon are SKU specific and others are ASIN specific. So here I have a graphic and I post graphics like this all the time on LinkedIn. You're gonna to wanna to add me as a connection or follow me on LinkedIn to see graphics like this every morning. And on the left, I've listed out what's SKU specific and on the right, I've listed out what's ASIN specific. So things that you don't ever have to worry about if you switch SKUs is your front end data, the reviews and the BSR. It's gonna be the same. You're not gonna lose ranking by switching SKUs. On the left, these are things that can be affected when you switch the SKU. The one that usually catches most people off guard is advertising campaigns. If you've made hundreds of advertising campaigns and you switch SKUs, all of your old campaigns will be inactive without you adding the new SKU into those campaigns. So you will need to re-add the new SKU into those campaigns. Following that, you're good to go. No further damage. The ACOS isn't going to change nothing out of the ordinary if you're going from FBA to FBA. Obviously, if you switch from FBM to FBA or FBA to FBM, those are going to have different results. Uh, and that would be whether you're prime or shipping it out of your own warehouse. Other things to keep in mind, the shipping method is SKU specific. So you could have one SKU for FBM and another for FBA. This is exactly what I do on my account. Here you can see my various Megapint listings, and you'll notice that I have stock in FBA here as well as stock at FBM. And I do this because my FBA stock sometimes stocks out. Now I've set up alerts here with these yellow bells, which means that I'm good to go. I don't need to ship anything in. 
Uh, but on occasion, you get a nice run or maybe a shipment gets lost or various different things. So it's always good to have duplicate SKUs with differing shipping methods on your Amazon account. This is one of the easiest uh, middle of the road, not advanced, not beginner, but middle of the road technique to solve stockouts. It's to have FBM plus FBA SKUs live on the account. Same concept they talked about earlier with SKU naming conventions. Keep the same SKU in the front and add a suffix. Then you'll know which SKU is what. I always like to have very basic SKUs with maybe the last four digits of a UPC code to identify uh, the product very quickly because obviously when your warehouse is creating a shipment, they can read the SKU. It's on the labels. And so if the SKU is too long, it gets cut off. Other various challenges occur. All right, so let's go back to this. So that's shipping method. Data attribute submission. This one takes a little bit of explaining. So I always store my data on the first SKU that I create. Generally speaking, I make the FBA SKU first. But if we click on edit on one of these, if the data is present on a SKU and I make a duplicate, I typically don't add the, the data to the duplicate unless I'm going to delete the original. The reason for this is I like one single source of data to master all of this information. If you have two sources of data, then you got to update in two locations and then you got uh, things going back and forth. Uh, and sometimes I'll get inquiries like, I can't change my image, I can't change my title. And we'll go into the account, we'll realize they've submitted it on a second SKU and they, they didn't realize you got to change it in both spots. So if you're going to switch the data from one SKU to another, though, you're going to want to come in and back up the data. Now, I have a video you need to watch next, and that is the CLR report, how to back up your catalog data. You can go into, uh, click on this button here next to watch this video or type into Google how to back up your Amazon catalog data, my Amazon guy, and you'll find my video here, and I'll walk you through how to back everything up. And then once you've backed it up, safely delete it, put it on the new SKU, and you're off to the races. We have a bunch of other catalog data and informational videos like this. Check out this playlist and thanks for watching.